digital presence. All right, it is Wednesday. It is noonish. I got the door open because we're waiting on a second guest to arrive. But I'm your host, uh, Don Smith. This is a life radio show on WWSU 106.9, which you just heard all that. I just like to be repetitive. <laughs> it's been a good week so far. I've uh, I've I've been out uh, not really on the job market. I have a job, but I've been trying to find something to get back on day shift. And I've been to a couple of job interviews lately. And the last two I went to couldn't have been more polar opposite of job interviews. Because the first one, it's the first interview that I've really been close to walking out of in a long time. Because I've walked out of job interviews before. I, I remember as, I was just getting out of HVAC, out of tech school, and I, I, <laughs> I walked up for this job interview, and I can't even remember what the guy said. But he said something that was so irritating to me that I just, we were standing there still by my car. I just shook his hand. I said, thank you for your time. And I got back in my car and drove off. Never had the interview. <laughs> Because I thought, well, there's no way I'm going to be able to work for you. So, Hey, our next guest is here. Actually, our first guest is here. One of our first guests is here. But anyway, I uh, <laughs> I, I went to this job interview. I'm not going to say where, but uh, again, it was one of those things. The first couple things out of the guy's mouth, I'm thinking, uh, there's no way I could work for you. The interview, I drove about 40 minutes to get to the interview. The whole interview lasted about 11 minutes. And as soon as I walked out, I called the recruiter and I said, yeah, this ain't for me. <laughs> I have no idea how the interview actually went, but I know I wouldn't want to work there. And then yesterday I went to a job interview that was complete opposite. It took me about 20 minutes to get there. And the interview was almost two hours long. Uh, the last hour and a half felt more like a training session. So yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Big difference in the two, just one side to the other. So hopefully I can get back on day shift soon and, uh, be able to do comedy once again anyway speaking of comedy uh i have two guests in the studio already that are just being really quiet over there no. uh, archie wiseman is is back in the studio as well as adrian miller so you, you can move that mic adrian. hello you don't have to you don't have to <laughs> reach all the way up there. i don't have to i can touch the mic it's not gonna fall apart i might it's not oh, oh. it's well this is wwsu studio oh, so okay let, let me get this door all the way randomly walk in besides i think uh, i i think our uh some of our physical plant employees are out there and i don't trust them around open microphones and i really Hopefully hope they heard plan. that trust your gut on that one <laughs> well because i know them because i used to work here and then they moved me on second shift and i thought if i'm going to be on second shift i might as well have a job that pays more so anyway what has been happening? Yeah, uh, Archie just out of uh, just had your wing repaired. Yeah, I just had shoulder surgery. I did a number on it this time. I had two large bone spurs. The one was about the size of the tip of my pinky finger, like a half inch long and about that big around, and it damaged the bicep tendon and the rotator cuff. And I had, you know, just a whole lot of fun. Wow. Yesterday yeah. was the first day of PT. Woo woo! <laughs> Those screams you heard at about ten thirty, eleven o'clock. Those were me. I was wondering. I was wondering what those were. Now we know. Yeah. Is, it, is it is it rough? Is it because I, uh, I have, it I have is a coworker? Because I have a coworker that just got back from. Uh, uh, it you know it was the first day where they do the first you know trying to see exactly how much range of motion you have and then determine where they're going to get you to. So far things are looking really good, but it's still rough because right. you know you've just spent you know two and a half three weeks in a sling and you know you haven't moved so everything's atrophied and would hurt if you hadn't had surgery right. let alone if you had so right. well did you at least bring a change of pants did you think enough ahead to... uh no didn't do that and i was a good boy didn't need them so that's, that's good. you know <laughs> but yeah the first couple of times where i'm reaching overhead and doing various stretches and stuff yeah it you know yeah. keenly so aware get, that i had up. some major you know uh, let me put it this way i'm aware that the warranty has expired you know? <laughs> so you, you'll yeah. be able to do your floor routine again soon your gymnastics and all that and... oh yeah no okay. but because <laughs> okay. i because i look forward to seeing that yeah <laughs> no i bend over to touch my toes my butt hits me in the back of the head i don't think you really want to see that so no i don't want to i don't want to see either of those things i'm yeah. sure there's some segment of the internet that wants to see that although it would be funny to see your butt hitch in the back of the head yeah I, w I would Bottle get a gold. Yeah, yeah, I would get a kick out of that. 
<laughs> so a- Adrian, how are you doing? You were on uh, uh, the 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 show last week at Wiley's. Yes, for me. Yes, that was and not the uh, was not about Wiley's. That was right. The that, fact was, that I was uh, running late today. So what's yeah. that? Running late. Just oh, running late. That's it's always okay. like yeah. You know, in the rain and yeah. Well, we it, it, hydro it was such a it, it was such a nice day out yesterday, and then just just such crap. Yeah. This morning. Yeah. Freezing rain by tomorrow morning. Woo woo. Yay, Ohio. Yep, gotta love it. <laughs> uh, yeah, the show on Thursday was great. I was I was very glad it went well because yeah. that that was the first show that I put together, set up, and booked. Oh, is and, this where you're asking for the shameless? Uh, how congratulations? Yes, on yes. Together. That's what it's like. Look Just, what I did. Know. <laughs> Thank you for being a part of it, but it was really me, Adrian. <laughs> you were there, but I was there. I wasn't on I stage. I just wanted to put out there, just fishing for some compliments. Right. It did run very well, right? That lineup was really great. Right? It was. That, that was some of I mean, my it favorites. Was. That's yeah. the thing. Like, there's nothing, nothing negative I can say. Only yeah. Well, every, everybody positive. did well, and uh, I've re- everybody. Uh, I think the audience was. Uh, they were all happy. I had, uh, you know, because that that was for uh, Wright State's. Uh, chapter of the English Honor Society, and uh, we were raising yeah. raising a little money for them. So, I mean, I think you picked all good people for the type of audience that it was, right? And right. like that's such a key undervalued thing. It's not just well, I'm just going to put some friends up there, right? Right. You know, but picking people who which they they were all the people vibe. that I liked, but they were people that I liked that I thought were really good that also matched. They complemented each other. The I crown. Think. Yeah. I think it really it was really nice to follow where. You know, uh, followed Mike Canistero, and you know he, the host was Karen Jaffe, and so it just the the style of the comedy. It was different. Each person was different, right. but it kind of that energy like flowed into each other, where it wasn't like suddenly you had a, a guy just um, going full uh, a dick, and how I was puking at this bin party last night. Right, that wouldn't. Uh, or you'd been like, wait, what? I don't think that would have fit well, but <laughs> no. <laughs> No, sorry, I forget that this is the radio. I don't remember what the uh, we can say words. puking. It's okay. We can say puking. Yeah, we can say <laughs> we can say so we can say the the p word. We can say the the d word. It depends anatomy. on the d word. I think it depends mm-hmm. on which one. Okay. I okay. mean, I always figure dick is a proper name, so that's, that's true. Fine. That's yeah. true. I feel like I need a list in front of me <laughs> of, of words I should avoid. Oh, I thought you meant a list of dicks <laughs> <laughs> or a list of dicks. I am yeah, we can... a connoisseur. <laughs> Hmm. It's like the. May I see the wine list? <laughs> yes, I am like. <laughs> I would like to see the dick list, please. Thank you. And I'm hoping that we're talking like people like you know Dick Smothers. So yeah, right, so, right, yeah. right. Dick Smothers. Uh, yes. Uh, Rich Little, because you know, yeah. of course, Dick is short for Richard. It's a good, so, it's a yeah. good old Richard. English name. Um, yes, you know, I love yes. Richard the Third. Yeah. Uh, not as a person, but as a character in a play. Well, yeah, as a, he wasn't really a great guy. As a person, but, you know. um, I don't think he would have been fun to bone um, either. <laughs> so on, on multiple la- levels as a woman, as an a, a amateur historian, but as a play fan, I do love, I did beg to be Richard III in one of my did you, acting classes. Did you classes. get to be Richard They III? did. That's she was fantastic. like, we're not going to do Richard III. She's like, the history plays, it's just, it's... We're not doing it. It's too much. And then she came back because we had a bunch of women in our class. And she was like, turns out Richard III has tons of women's roles. So guess what? You get to be Richard <laughs> III. And I'm like, yes. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Because some, some of the histories are, are good. Some of the histories are really good. Yeah, it just it's but. one of those weird, it's like going to like a, a comic book film when you don't know and they just do a bunch of fan service. I'm sorry if I'm... That's okay. Well, I just want to make I'm sure. Have you ate a mint before now? <laughs> That's what, chew it right <laughs> into the microphone. I'm losing like half the audience right here. I'm just yeah. going to... Uh, well, yeah, now we're down to one. I'm down to one <laughs> one weirdo who's like, I'm really into that. Mm-hmm. Can you chew some more yep, in the he microphone? Loves, he loves mm. mints being chewed into the microphone on the radio. Mm. And who really can blame gets him? really gets me going. It's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Richard III, though. It, it's just, it's so... Like, it's one of those things, like, basically, it's, uh, I don't even know. Like, it, it only, the plays were only, like, 50, 100 years, I think, after the events. So it's one of those things where they're like, well, we all read the news, and you all remember this. Right. But as a modern audience, you're like, who the F is this person? And they're yeah. using, like, their nicknames, you know, sort of their celebrity. And you're just like, I don't. Well, that was Shakespeare. He was weird anyway. It's just, well, that's true. 
That's true. Also, I learned that everybody was named Henry back then, and that is so confusing. Yeah, there were there were a lot of Henrys. Which one are we talking about? Yeah. Like even he well, even makes a play on it. He's like this Henry, end, that Henry, yeah. Henry, 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 yeah. Henry. Which one am I talking about? Yeah. Context, and you're like, haha, that's right. right. Everyone's named Henry. Right. I get it. I get it. Shakespeare. I get it. Yeah. We yeah. get it. Yeah, we get it. We get Move it. on. Move, write something else. People really don't realize what a hack Shakespeare is. Because he hasn't written anything in a long time. No, he hasn't. He hasn't. Slacker. Come on, Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah, get your get shit it together. together. And, you know, his stuff is just loaded with cliches. Granted, he invented them, right. but they're still cliches. Right. So, yeah. They, they probably were then. We just didn't know. Yeah. That is true. Yeah, there were, you know, he was, he, pr- he stole everything else from everybody else. And mm-hmm. just, yeah. 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 If you've ever read the original version of Taming of the Shrew, it's... I don't believe I have. Ooh, it's rough. I do the paper on it. It, it was, <laughs> It's like as much as controversial as that play is, uh, Shakespeare's version and not being progressive, like, whew, the, the original version was just straight on, like, you know, beating your wife and, like, not just joking about it, but, right, like, right. literally happening and being, ha, 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 beating your wife. Well, yeah, and back, you're like, back, oh then, my back then it was God. just good, clean humor. <laughs> also, it wasn't written well. You know, I, I, the last three weeks, I'm really glad that I've been, you know, a decent husband and stuff like that because I've learned that true love is having somebody who will wash your hiney when you can't. So that's, yeah, there you, know, you go. There you go. You know, that's been kind of important. So, you know, I'm yeah, glad I, we progressed away from, you know, white I, I, and such. I've, I th- I think I've been pretty good to my wife. I don't know if she'd do that. I would probably be scooting across the lawn on my butt. You know? <laughs> oh, I don't think that. She you just yelled, "You go outside! Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. Take yeah. It outside! Go outside! Get outside! Get outside. Yeah. Out. What did you do?" <laughs> I don't think it's a situation where it was just given freely. I'm sure that I'm owing something at this oh, point. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. as payback. You know, oh. because yeah. I'm sure it will come up. Well, do you remember when you had the shoulder surgery and I had to, yeah, okay, so you need to do this. Yeah, that's how that's going to roll. We just yeah. know that. So. Yeah, there, there's there's always a trade-off. I mm-hmm. called the secret ledger. <laughs> the secret ledger. Like, no, 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 no. You did this for me. What what am I going to owe you for yeah. this? Well, you're spilling the secret now. I mean, well, and you know, romance, I it's, say, is yeah. pretending it doesn't exist. Yeah. yeah. But we she all has know a secret it ledger and... <laughs> So many younger comics are jealous of Zach, and I'm thinking, nope, secret ledger. No, I'm good. You know? <laughs> they all have a secret ledger, Archie. Oh, this is true. See, I just, I, I'm actually, yeah. I'm actually good right now because my wife's still happy with their Valentine's Day. Because oh, that's right, I, you get a grace I, period. I, but you get a grace period. I, I sent her flowers to work, so mm-hmm. it made all of her uh, coworkers jealous. Oh, which that's is great. really the goal. Yeah, that's, that's the great. goal of flowers. It's not just because flowers are pretty and she likes them. It's because they get delivered to her office, and everybody goes, oh, "Yeah, flowers, my hat, <laughs> And that's 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 the goal. That's the yeah. extra. That's like a bonus. Yeah. Well, I, I I get a lot of husband points because I write my wife love letters and send them to her at work. Not mm-hmm. you know, not every day because you can't do it every day. Then it doesn't mean anything. Right. But yeah. you know, two three times a month. You know, and you know. Trust me, you can tell when I walk in there on the day they've been delivered because I get the look from all the other women. <laughs> and it's like, yes, yes. yes. There you go. That's trying, it, and that's what it's all about. I'm trying to do something. Well, uh, I'm trying to, like, I took one of those love languages. I forced my boyfriend to take the love languages quiz because I was okay. just, I had just listened to this podcast about it. And I'm like, we are taking this. And I feel like his constant thing is now like, uh, why do I have homework? Why is it whenever I see you, there's always, <laughs> like, I'm like, just take it. Just take it. It's only, but it turned out words of affirmation was one of his high ones, which I didn't realize. But then, like, things started falling into place. You know, like, insert gif of the math uh, in front of my face right now. Uh, but, yeah, it was like, oh, like, he's been giving me, like, he'll hide little notes, usually in my mm-hmm. coffee can or, like, places I'll find it. Like, I love you. I miss you. You know, and it, it means nice. so much yeah. to me. Yeah, because I, that's very... Oh big for me and i'm like i haven't done anything like that for him like ever (laughs) did you take the quiz (laughs) i did well i took it i took it first i didn't tell him though to bias him i didn't tell him what my results were uh but i was like oh i didn't i just like it's like i played the tape back and i'm like i don't really do anything like that i don't say enough like i don't other than saying that he's super hot and that he's my boyfriend (laughs) <laughs> that's about that's it. All that's all I get. That's, that's all I say. Well, I'm like, I really need to work on this. Yep. I need to I'm step the one up my game. who's more expressive along those lines too. You know, so it's like, I, I guess Zach and I are kind of similar with our roles and our respective relationships. You know, uh, 
I've written my wife a bunch of poetry. I've written, you know, I write her the love notes and stuff like that. And I'm okay. But the funny thing is when I get a letter back from D, you know, like I say, I'll write a love notes and it'll be like two, three sentences, you know, just a little quick, you know, just to let her know I'm thinking about her and stuff. And then I get this dissertation back from her, you know, on various <laughs> things. And it's cool because I know she cares, but it's like, you know, you know, I have to reread it, you know, three, four times to get everything. And it's like, I probably should have been taking notes while I was reading this. You know, it's just, yeah. you know, <laughs> you will be quizzed later. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. That's and and your quiz results go down in the secret ledger. Mm -hmm. That's exactly That's, right. Yep. That's exactly yeah. right. <laughs> it's going to be the multiplier uh, for interest. Right. Right. Yeah. Will your interest rate go down or up based on in your on your debit? I'm hoping it's going up and stuff. <laughs> Although, you know, it's kind of scary. A coworker described my wife and I as an old married couple at this point. So, you know, I'm well, you not know why, sure how you much. You know why that is, don't you? Because we're an old married couple. Yes. <laughs> exactly. You know, <laughs> you know, we, you know we'll notch 27 years this year. And well, congratulations. Like I say, we've been that, together that's, 30. That's so tough. Yeah, that's, that's a feat this, yeah. this, this day and age. And I, I'm just lucky. You know, I have somebody who gets me. And I'm not an easy person to get, you know. Not even, at all. You know, thank you. <laughs> Thank you for, you know, <laughs> just appreciate that. <laughs> no, but, but I'm not, you know, I'm like a lot of creative people, you know, I have these little zones that I get into and stuff like that. And, right. you know, I need my space and stuff like that. I always used to attract when I was single, I used to attract the girls who would smother me at times and I just couldn't deal with it. You know, it was, <laughs> you know, these short relationships that would last two, yeah. three months because, and it's just like, no, you have to go now, you know, uh, the best one. This is this girl, Sharina. This is a girl I dated just before I met my wife. Every year, my dad and I used to go up to Canada fishing, and it was a week-long fishing trip. It was just a father-son thing, and we'd been doing it for like 11 years at that point, you know? And she was one of those who, and this is before the days of cell phones. She would call in the morning practically to wake me up. She'd call the moment I got home. She called the moment after, you know, just nonstop. And it was, you know, I could see, I was still living at home, but I could see that it was, right. you know, driving my parents and stuff nuts and everything else. And then I'm like, well, you know, in a couple of weeks, dad and I are going on our annual fishing trip or something. She's like, well, if you go, it's over. And I'm thinking, okay, there's my out, yeah. you know, <laughs> sure do love fishing. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, I went and it was the craziest thing. I come back and she tried to act like nothing had happened. Yeah, like, like she, she hadn't said the it's like, ultimatum. No, you, yeah. you know, I'm sorry. You said if I went, it was over. I yeah. went. Are we, are we clear yeah. on this? Yeah. You know, yeah. you, you, but, and then when I had here. somebody who gave me space, it was like, oh, you're mine. You know? Yeah. There yeah. You, go. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, you get me and this is way cool. And we've yeah, got my, a really my, strong my relationship. And I, we're not, we're not extremely vocal about things, but you know, we, that's why every now and then she gets totally shocked when I send her flowers at work. Cause that's. Mm -hmm. Well, according to love I'm not languages, extremely vocal. That's showing it through through gifts. Right. Right. Yeah. So she so she likes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gifts. Yeah. And it's easy. It's easy, especially if you're like far away, to be able to just like. Hey. Well, we we actually started off in a long distance relationship. She was in California, Aww. and we saw each other for two years. You know, back and forth from California. So, so lots yeah, of flowers. Yeah. So the lots flower of flowers, lots of flowers, and the and charts. and there for there for a while after she came here, you know, we were we were struggling for money, and really you know, she didn't get flowers <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> You're like, here's a dandelion. <laughs> and besides that, she didn't have a, a, a full time office job where I could actually send her flowers at work because her schedule always changed. So it's like yeah. okay, and now because flowers just for flowers' sake don't count as much no you don't get full credit like i said unless there's a lot of co-worker jealousy involved exactly. well there's that and like i say i make a big deal i mean i'm an old school romantic i mean it's it's really pathetic how sappy i am at times you know i mean i have if you would see i have an entire filing cabinet for stationery two you know just a two drawer not a full four drawer but just stationery i mean i have different colors, different sizes, stuff that's embossed. And, wow. and I also do the wax stamps and everything else. And I need to step up my game. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I bought? I went to I went and got some discount uh, kid Valentines, a box. And I I just, it has like puppies and kitties on it. And I just, I write like a, I did a little tiny space, like a note for him. 
that's that's, that's all. Yeah. But yeah. I often do it like right before I go to bed. Like I haven't been good about because I've been tired, but I just am like, oh. I so right, I have be, to yeah, when you're notes. tired, right before you go to bed. And so I'm it could like, be a grocery list. It could be, know, you never like, know what's going to be written on it. It's <laughs> like I could think of something more clever if I wasn't so tired. It's just like okay, let love me sh- you heart. <laughs> let me show you how pathetic I am. I'm like, hmm. Okay, we're going to go with lilac colored paper, and oh, here's a fuchsia envelope to go with that. You know, that's how bad I am. You would you would make some lucky man a heck of a boyfriend. Oh yeah, <laughs> totally, totally. <laughs> you know, I, I, honestly, there's a lot no, of me you, that would fit right in to be a gay man. Yeah, your wife's a very lucky woman. Yeah, because yeah. there aren't a lot of guys that that put that much thought into it. Yeah, you know, but I mean, I've, gosh, I've written her like around 400 poems. You know, she has several books and stuff like that. And some of them, you know, particularly the early ones when I was a horrid writer, really suck. But <laughs> she still, you know, that's like her most prized possession right there. So, you know, I must be doing something right. Yeah. I mean, as long as she doesn't doesn't, doesn't slap you with the book and say, would you stop already? And she's not using them to light the barbecue. So, you, <laughs> right, know, there's, there you, you know, there's a positive. <laughs> that's good. Well, that that's how you've made it 27 years. Yeah. yeah. 30 altogether. So, yeah. yeah. Congratulations. For- Thank you being such a woman no <laughs> i'm just i'm just messing with you i i uh gotta respect that yeah put a lot of a, a lot of effort in the thing well that's just it you know i mean every, that's, all how, relationships that's how relationships go through used to last times. more is you know you put you know? more effort into and, that and it was uh i think a lot of the reason the older relationships used to last longer is because you know grew, grew up in the same town and everybody was related so if once you found one that wasn't related to you that's who you were kind of stuck with i thought you were going to say separate <laughs> twin beds <clears throat> well that too <laughs> well it's kind of scary because i'm from a small town up in northern michigan and by small i mean about 650 people and it's a situation up there where you know i know who my fourth and fifth cousins are right you know because you know everything's it, it's tightly woven uh but d is so not d is from here in ohio so, so right so you know you, you had we made to, sure yeah, you know had to go out of state yeah it yeah. happens that being said did, we yeah, adopted so thing. it doesn't really matter you know genetically wise but you know still yeah, yeah. but still you know yeah. nobody wants to know you're married to your cousin that'd just be weird no yeah. i mean it's see and, and be, being a smith it's kind of tough for me you yeah, know, because yeah. there are a lot of Smiths out there. So yeah. I actually, I didn't just go out of state. I went different nationality. My wife's Indian. So <laughs> I'm not, I wasn't taking go. any chances. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, I think my uncle did on the Miller side did marry a Miller. But our, our name is like made up. It's just, it's what right. they, it's well, what they picked yeah, when Mil- they came Miller, it's, it's kind of like Smith. It's a, it, it was a job title. Yeah. It used to be a job title. That's yeah. why there's so many Smiths and Millers. They just Not were, sure like, what happened wanna, with the Joneses. But. We don't want people to mess up our last name, so we give right. up already. Like, we have just showed up on Ellis Island, and we're just like, we give up. Yeah, Miller, just, just Miller, take just it. Miller, <laughs> Miller, <laughs> Miller. Like, I, no. I could just picture that was what happened. He's like, Hovenick. And they're like, what? Hovenick. What? He tried to spell it out, and then he's just like. <sighs> eh, Miller. Miller. <laughs> Miller. <laughs> Miller. We're yeah, Miller. Fine. Oh, okay. That's, well, yeah, that's, 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 that's one of those, because my, uh. My mother's mother, my grandma on my mother's side, her maiden name was Smith. Oh. And, of course, my dad's side of the family is Smith. Yeah. Well, my dad's side of the family is all from Tennessee. Mom's side of the family is mostly from New York City. Because my, my grandmother grew up in Yonkers. <laughs> so. So do you think it's also a made-up name, or do you think that they also just I I like think I think it's Smith? pretty much a made-up name. Yeah, they were they were just like they were just being easy. I I, I I traced my family history back to like the late 1700s is as far back as I got on one side. Of course, dad's side of the family there in the hills of Tennessee is a little harder to track. So I got back to about <laughs> mid 1800s on that. And it's like, eh, I'm not, I'm done. But <laughs> my dad got back to the 1500s, I guess on his side, which was kind of, I That's guess a long way back. Yeah. Yeah. I guess church records and you know, uh, but I guess, I guess I'm a lot more Austrian than I thought I was. So I guess in the 1700s, that's when all the people went to the Eastern Europe part of it. So, uh. which is uh, just sort of I don't know. It's interesting because I I don't know. It's just it's less exciting. It's like oh, you're just more Austrian. It's like cool. <laughs> you're just, more. Austrian. You're just more. Yeah. They just kind of settled, and you know there was sort of empty space at the time, and they pioneered out there, and then they just stayed. 
so yeah i love mustard i'm definitely very like i like sausages um i also like pastries those are delicious fine yeah, fine yeah. vienna pastries uh uh i like white flowers um <laughs> I like white things. <laughs> okay, this is getting disturbing. We're going to move along. I saw you standing right there before me. I tried to think of clever things to say, but I settled for how long. Then I knew you were the one. God himself placed here for me I know it's said all the time But I, well I don't care It's how I feel It's all cause there is no one else That I want by my side There is no one else Holding through the night There is no one else Alright And you make the good things Even better There is nothing That could seem So important When I am thinking Of you Yeah, now when I look Into your eyes Well, all I can see Is my life with you Now when I think Of where we've been Well, I can't Times and the bad. Well, I may not always like you, but I'll always be glad to have you by my side. Put it in sticks! Oh, 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 we want to learn how to defend ourselves against pointed sticks, do we? Getting all iron might, yeah? Fresh fruit not good enough for you, eh? Oh, 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 well, well, I'll tell you something, my lad. When you're all walking home tonight and some homicidal maniac comes after you, but a bunch of Logan Brees don't come cry to me. All right, uh, we are back on the Life Radio Show. I'm your host, Don Smith, sitting in the studio with Archie Wiseman and Adrian Miller uh, discussing heritage. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> Uh, we do have some news stories. If we want to go over some news stories, we got some new stuff uh, hot off the presses from a couple weeks ago. <laughs> uh, we're, we'll start off uh, over in Switzerland. Uh, the Lucerne uh, Lucerne University of Applied Science and Arts in Switzerland has a new course of study for scholars to pursue. You can get a bachelor's degree or a master's degree in yodeling. Uh, yeah, beginning in 2018-2019, the academic year, students will be able to major in the traditional form of singing, which was used by Swiss herdsmen to communicate with each other in the mountains. Uh, the BBC reported that prize-winning yodelist Nadja Rass will lead the courses. Not your, not your what? <laughs> <laughs> he will lead the courses. Uh, I guess, I guess he, N-A-D-J-A. I, I don't 
I'm just wondering but, if there's a Slim Whitman honorary wait, scholarship. Wait, yeah, there N-A-D-J-K? should be. Yeah. 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 Isn't that Nadia? I, I don't know. And Nadia Ras. That would that would probably I be it. I think you're right. Are on there that, are yeah. there a lot of female yodelers? I don't know. I don't follow I yodeling think so. very I know well. In country, some of the country stars I know like Leanne Rhymes because I'm super old. Uh, Leanne <laughs> Rhymes and, and other people. Uh, you know, she was a yodeler. I, I didn't think, know that. I think she was. It was some country. You can get a while that. Ago. You can get that mic closer because you're you, you, you're fading on me. Sorry. We don't Sorry. want you fading out. Sorry. Oh, are we okay, good now? Perfect. I, I, good? I'm perfect. laughing how somebody much. who's you know barely touching. Well, I was just at a college bar last night uh, where the average age was probably 19 or 20. So At a college bar? Yeah. Mm. So I felt kind of, uh, you know, I, eh. guess, I guess most of them are 21. I did see a lot of vodka shots, but also college bar. So who knows whether, eh. you know. But, Maybe the fake IDs. Coming but yeah, out. it's one of those things where you're like. You know, I'll be like, I remember one time I made a Lorena Baba joke, and, and the, one of the comments was like, I don't think they got the yeah. reference. <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, oh, God, I'm so old already. Yeah. That's that's a terrible feeling, isn't it? I don't know if it's terrible so much as, like, the really thing that really bothers me is more the fact that, like, well, this, this group of people is just, like, they're never going to be into what you're saying. And I'm like, cool. It's just weird <laughs> to have already, like, aged out of, like, a big demographic yeah, yeah. of people. I'm feeling like I should be telling people to get off my lawn right now. It just, you know, it's <laughs> because I've got but her I beat do. by a couple of decades. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, like Olivia Burns, I know last night she tried to do, started a joke. She has one about New Year's resolutions. And it's just, you know, you do that. You always have something at the top. Sometimes it's like, that's like, you know, you know, rhetorical question or question the audience. And she's like, anyone kept their New Year's resolutions, you know, and still had their New Year's resolutions? And then they just, she just looked out and she's like, of course not. None of you have resolutions yet. Right. Like, yeah, you haven't made <laughs> like, enough mistakes in like, life. Like, it's just about dieting and stuff. <laughs> and it's like, I, like, no, you you guys are all all young and beautiful and thin. And yeah. you and have we, no and idea yeah, about the pending mortality. And still be ripped. And, yeah. Exactly. Right, exactly. That's yeah. coming for you, but... Anyway, oh, yeah. the oh, rest yeah. of us have faced the Grim Reaper in the eye at least once. So <laughs> just an entirely, it just puts you in an entirely different stage, I think. You know, there's, there's something that happens sort of, you know, mid-20s, maybe you have a close call in a car accident, or, you know, like just things happen. You know, health, your body right. starts being like, nah, I'm not going to do that. And yeah. you're like, just <laughs> reach for that. And you're like, nah, I'm not going to. Yeah. And you're like, why, body, why? Yeah, remember how you used to tie your shoes remember, without sounding like you were being attacked? Bend over without making that noise. You know, you'd bend over to tie your shoes and be like, ugh. Yeah, yeah. You remember, remember those yeah. times, body? Remember that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, times. I've had to have somebody else tie my shoes for the past couple of weeks because I yeah. haven't been able to quite reach them. You've been, now like, I'm, you've been spoiled. Now I'm back to... I can do it now, but you know, up until about four days ago, it was still a no. Yodel? Yeah, did you? Yodel? <laughs> did you yodel? Did you yodel while you? Tie um, your I shoes? think my wife would probably, you know, put me in for some sort of psychiatric screening if I had of. So no, I'm thinking. No. I'm glad you brought it back to yodeling because I, I was just, gonna, you know, I just, we, you know, I'm trying. That's what I'm, I'm yeah. here for. Yeah, because we, we got a little together. off track, and I, I, I like to. These are important news stories, and Sorry. anybody that wants to transfer to the UCERN. Uh, University of Applied Sciences and Arts. How is yodeling an applied science or, or an applied art? But how do you apply well, it? Well, I mean, technically they're using it to communicate to herd sheep or something? Yeah, the, the herdsmen and, and the, uh, yeah. So sheep like yodeling. I, I don't know if they're communicating with sheep or with each other uh, through yodeling. Because I would change. I'm babe, wondering how the nervous the lot. sheep are, but you know yeah. that's well. <laughs> like, is this? I get real nervous when I hear yodeling. Oh, totally. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm you get not nervous. even a sheep. <laughs> You're just like, <laughs> like who's that? What's going on? It's guys? Kind of like hearing banjos in the south, you know. I, so it's the European. It's the European banjos when right, they when right, they remake the, <laughs> when they remake well, that's, Deliverance that's yodeling, in the Alps. That's why yodeling fits so well in the country music because they had that in common. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they have mountains and yeah. you know hillbillies and yeah. there there are European hillbillies. It's a, I believe it. My yeah. family comes from that place. Uh, we are European hillbillies. There are plenty of the old country photos of just pitchforks and. Well, even the the, the American hillbillies, a lot of them, out. a lot of those were were immigrants from Scotland and Ireland. So. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's because yeah. they were used to being away from the rest of the. Uh, civilized society so they ran to the mountains as soon as they got here yeah, yeah my like, family's oh, yeah. largely scottish and irish and you know that's uh 
then we also have some French that came in during the Civil War and stuff, and then also Canadian and Cree Indian and like I said, pretty, all, you're all over the map. Yeah, pre- yeah, pretty much all over the map and stuff like that. But you are the mixing pot, the melting pot, the melting yeah, pot. the mixing pot, mixing pot, mixing bowl, melting pot. You're you the, are yeah. you are a cooking utensil. You're the guacamole, mm-hmm. the yeah. American <laughs> grain. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you are the meat slicer. Yeah, wow. <laughs> You are. <laughs> Get the yep. uh, on to more important news. A flight from Dubai to Amsterdam had to make an emergency landing in Vienna uh, after a fight broke out because one of the passengers wouldn't stop breaking wind. Uh, <laughs> the fart-induced fracas uh, happened ele- at February 11th aboard Transavia Airlines Flight HV6902 when two men sitting next to an apparently very flatulent man raised a stink about his repeated gas attacks. When the alleged perpetrator didn't stop, his disgusted seatmates, seatmates reportedly complained to the airline crew, who apparently did nothing. Instead, the captain issued a warning to the two complainants, accusing them of noisy and aggressive behavior and making threats. When the freedom from flatulence fighters wouldn't stop griping about their fellow passenger, a fight broke out on the plane, according to Dutch language newspaper De Telegraaf, or De Telegraaf. <laughs> something like that <laughs> uh, the pilots made an emergency stop in vienna and removed the complainants but apparently not the farting man uh two women sitting in the same row uh, as the angry men were also forced off the plane as well apparently they didn't like the farting either so transavia airlines if you are very flatulent you're welcome aboard their their flight you can the airlines see the i people. i think it, if if you can't smoke on a plane anymore you ought to have to hold your fart I'd like to know how you do that because, you know, my wife's been making me eat healthier because, you know, I've kind of been under her control the last three weeks. And, you know, it's like, you know, we had vegetable soup with cabbage in it one night, broccoli the next night. And it's like, you know, I've been jet propelled, you know, plain plain and simple. I can can tell. I mean, since you've been in the studio. No. (laughs) (laughs) But, no, I mean, you're you're in a big metal tube in the sky, mm-hmm. and it, it's pretty well closed in. It's not like you're getting. It's not like you can open a window or strike a match because that yeah. make a lot of people nervous. So, <laughs> so, I guess they need extra seating in the lavatory. I just think for that they need reason. a new ad campaign. Yeah, you know, target that particular niche that's not being served right now. Yeah, that, you know, that's are, that's true. Does yeah, your wife have you on airlines. a high fiber diet? Yeah. Do you yeah. just the flatulent skies? Yeah. <laughs> do you just want to yeah. rip one without? Yeah, I, th- I think Glade, Glade should have their own airline. Maybe, maybe that's maybe yeah. you know they we're giving lots of ideas to this beleaguered airline. You know, yeah. I think I think some great. Well, I think I think they're fine with it. I think they're fine with it. It's just that because they ejected the passengers that yeah, were complaining clearly, about. Clearly, it. So, they yeah. stood up for the right of fartists. Right, everywhere. A- a- yeah, everywhere flatulence everywhere. Yeah. They they struck a blow. Don, I believe they prefer the term fartists, okay? Do they? Yes, not not I'm, flatulent. I'm sorry, I wasn't not, I wasn't being that's, politically that's a correct. Slur, Don, I, yeah, a slur. I didn't, I didn't you, mean to. I can't believe you uh, would yeah. say that on this radio. I mean, then we're in a college, Don. College. I, for, I, I forgot how sensitive fartists can be. I mean, you know, I think the Bean Association yeah. might be. Well, yeah, and, at know, least they, they they're not create starving a partnership. fartists. That would be There'd terrible. Be. So. <laughs> that's one thing you can say for fartists yeah, unlike not, artists they I'm are worried, not we're starving. about to see flying monkeys right about now so <laughs> you never know you, you never know yeah, you never know what's coming up in here uh <laughs> uh abby beckley who uh, was working on an alaskan fishing boat back in 2016 when she discovered something fishy in her left eye actually it wasn't fish it was worms 14 of them uh, the 28-year-old Oregon resident felt a prick under her eyelid and figured it was just a stray lash. But after a week, she decided uh, to see what was causing the irritation. She says, I, I put my finger in there and uh, kind of picking motion, and I pulled out a worm. I looked at my finger, and it was moving, and I was shocked. I would imagine so. Uh, it gets worse. She uh, she pulled out about six more of them before going to the hospital and where they removed 14 total. So, yes, yes. Is she going to be on that? What's that one show? Where See, the- my guess, she was on a fishing boat, and uh, never mind. <laughs> now, never mind. You'd get worms on a fishing boat. That leads to a masturbator joke, and I'm not going to do that. So- <laughs> yeah. 
Got to be careful you don't it's get it. The in level your of eye. class we have here. That's yes. true. That's true. We can't we can't go there on this show because we are we're better than that, Archie. We're better than that. Are you though? We're not better than that. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> not at all. That's so I am gonna have to tear out all my eyelashes now. I think <laughs> <laughs> just to make sure. I mean, yeah, I that's, mean that's horrifying. <laughs> that is. That's that's. I'm thinking there's yeah. been times when I've been out fishing, ran out of bait, and I didn't check. You know, it's yeah, just... Yeah. That's, that's true. <laughs> but they, they couldn't have been that big, though. Yeah, they had to be these yeah, little... Yeah, little tiny, like, parasitic hair -like, kind yeah. of hair-like worms. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to catch anything off of them. Yeah. You could use it to catch bait. That'd yeah. be about there it. There you go, yeah. yeah. yeah catch, catch a minnow and use it. <laughs> <laughs> so be careful on Alaskan fishing boats, because... Apparently they got worms. Next time I go on one, I will remember. I hear they have that crabs cruise, there too. Yeah, so that <laughs> cruise you were planning, yep, crabs and worms. Yeah, yeah. You that get everything. Alaskan fishing cruise. Yep. yep. No. <laughs> Real discounted <sighs> rates right now. Yeah, yeah. They, ever since that, yep, that, fantastic. I want to. I'm going to go on a whaling boat. That's what it, you know. I'll have to take the yeah. the fart friendly airline to the. They have a well, package deal. That's true. That's true. Because you could you could go on fart friendly airways airlines and yeah. you know get out and and get worms on a yeah. boat. So yeah. yeah, you could. That's fantastic. And of course, the boat's going to be fart friendly anyway because you just go up on on. The, sure. That's why they call it the poop deck. Exactly. Because yeah. you know we had to go there. <laughs> that is our class. That's kind of that and that's ninety eight percent guys. So yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Not yeah. to mention you got those big waders on. Yeah. You know? You're going to be gassing yourself all exactly. day long. Yeah, it's, it's just going to come, it's going to boil right back up Self on you. Self-contained. Yeah. <laughs> it has Matt's suit. Uh, Aaron, Aaron Meininger, uh, 29 years old of Hernando Beach, Florida. I love Florida news. Was arrested on February 12th after Hernando County deputies caught him stealing items from DeMarco Family Funeral Home in Spring Hill. When officers arrived, Meininger was carrying a tub of formaldehyde out of the building. They also found makeup, nail polish, electric clippers, soap, and other items used in funeral preparation in Meininger's car. Curiously, the Tampa Bay Times reported Meininger told dep deputies that he was, quote, bored and messed up and didn't even know what kind of business he was burgling. He said he would probably would have just thrown the items away. <laughs> so, yeah, it messed up enough to go steal a tub of formaldehyde. I mean, live your dream, man. Yeah. If live that's your what dream, I guess. <laughs> Freedom, we all gotta have freedom. hobbies. <laughs> yeah. We all gotta have hobbies. I guess just being like, you know, sometimes it's about the journey, not the destination. That's true. That's true. Sometimes, yeah, it's just even though a it's not home what is pretty much steal, all our eventual destinations. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. Well, maybe he was preparing for something bigger. I just picturing the yard sale, you know, where you just like being like trying to sell. <laughs> like, I uh, got yeah. this uh, mortuary. Yeah, the, that, there would be there would be some and just there would be some disturbed collectors out there that would that would buy some stuff. Yeah, because yeah. if I mean if you market it as as far as where it came from, I mean not specifically because that'd be a way to get busted for stealing it. But if you marketed with that, you know where it came from, yeah, they would thanks probably thanks for continuing, you know, to make sure that my faith in humanity remains. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, that's true. That yeah. we gotta we gotta. We got an image to uphold here. Yeah. <laughs> I just do love the idea of a, a non-professional thief. Yeah. Like, he's like, it's uh, just a hobby. It's yeah. just, you know, you got something to keep me sharp. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Just, just, just honing my skills. You know, I don't even, you know, it's not even about the stuff. It's just, you yeah. know. Yeah. It was, just, it was practice. The, he was practicing for a bigger heist, maybe. Maybe. If maybe. He, if he could have gone on, who knows what he could be now. I mean, maybe he could have, uh, maybe he could have stolen from a clown supply store, or that would, yeah. He Why could not? Have stolen from. I'm assuming he could fit the clown supplies in a really small car. Yeah, that yeah. would that would be. He would have to. I think yeah. that's part right? of it. Yeah. He'd have to steal their car, just knowing that it would hold more stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know that would also be really awkward. Someone stole from a clown supply store. I just happen to have all of these uh, red noses on the back. Yeah. Just yeah. Because yeah. Why? Uh, well, you never know when you're going like, to need It's one. like weird. Yeah. Like, I'm just picturing a guy with weird stuff he's selling on the back of his truck. Yeah, <laughs> like, I have a guy. <laughs> yeah. He's like that guy. But yeah. It's always well, like yeah. Everybody, everybody's got to know one of those guys that has weird stuff that they sell from the back of their car every now yeah. and then. 
I feel like that could be a character on a show. So you'd, you'd have to be careful if you stole a clown's car, though, because you never ha- know how many of them are Exactly, in a clown just because comes that, out. Yeah, that could be like kidnapping. You could get 14 counts of kidnapping just for yeah. stealing right. a car. Yeah. That's right. That's... And they would probably, he'd probably get <laughs> so charged. So the Grand Theft Auto wouldn't be bad enough to begin with. Right, yeah. right, right. I mean, I'm just picturing, like, you know, he tries to, I don't know, it's just thinking aggravated. Or whatever, you have, like, a gun, but then it's, like, a fake gun that just goes, like, bang. Yeah, one confetti. of them has a little fag, flag yeah. come out. Yeah. Flag. Flag. I almost. <laughs> They'd have to, like, really debate whether, like, a seltzer bottle counts as a weapon or not. Oh, like, it does. It would become, yeah. like, a whole, a whole thing. <laughs> if you take a seltzer nozzle and make sure that it's pointed slightly upwards so that you get some, you know, some of the liquid, yeah, you know, yeah. into someone's nostrils. Oh, it's a weapon and oh, a yeah, half. Absolutely. That's that's like a taser. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's just gonna it's gonna decapitate that's or probably, disable that would be not sales decapitate pitch. them. Like, That'd be like a whole selling, different. Someone would be like, you know, trying to sell like you know, a little gun or something. And instead yeah. it would be like clown supplies and then he would have to try to pitch it yeah. as weapons. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, this is if you if you use this at the right angle, like Yeah, yeah, yeah you see the guy at the car, he's got anything bigger than that? Yeah, well hold on. Do you have anything like a huge <laughs> concealed weapon? He pulls out like a flower lapel pin. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> uh, we got time for one more, and then we're gonna then we're gonna have to wrap it up for the uh, for the hour. Uh, birds nesting near natural gas compressors have been found to suffer sy- symptoms similar to PTSD in humans, according to researchers at the Florida Museum of Natural History. Noise pollution has been ma- named as the culprit. Uh, the Washington Post reported that the team studied birds in Rattlesnake Canyon Habitat Management Area in New Mexico, which is uninhabited by humans but does contain natural gas wells and compression stations that constantly emit a low-frequency hum. The, stud- the steady noise was linked to abnor- abnormal levels of stress hormones, and the usually hardy western bluebirds in the area were found to be smaller and displayed bedraggled feathers. Uh uh, stress physiologist Christopher Lowry said, quote, the body is just starting to break down. So maybe that's the partiers of the species. Well, that's what I'm thinking. What I'm or thinking meth, is, you know, yeah, <laughs> they're in Rattlesnake Canyon. Oh. It's got to be a more stressful environment. Oh, there is that. I mean, is it is it the is it the noise of the compressors that's stressing them out, or is it the rattlesnakes? Yeah, the fact that they're I, being yeah, pursued by little, yeah, you know, little high end predators continuously. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> they get did they take that into consideration? Is it called Rattlesnake Canyon habitat just to keep humans out, or is that actually a rattlesnake canyon that would keep a lot of humans yeah. out? That would I keep mean, my wife mean, out. My wife is snake phobic, so well, yeah, it's kind of like. Greenland is full of ice, and Iceland isn't. Right. Maybe I should name my lady parts Rattlesnake Canyon. <laughs> Just to deter, my, deter guys. Yeah, the comics would back off of you. And all like, the other guys. Oh, you're interested uh, in my Rattlesnake Canyon? <laughs> Are you? Uh. <laughs> that, I got that, something that, in that. my boot, and I don't think you want to find out what it is. Yeah. Well, you need to. You need to have like a little rattle in your pocket, so you. Can yeah, that's sh- true. Sh- I should. Sh- 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 <laughs> I can just get one of those envelope with the rattlesnake eggs, you know, it has the washer on the rubber band that you wind it up. And then when someone goes to, it says rattlesnake eggs on it. It's an old practical joke. I've got oh, one of them okay. at home. I think I've, yeah. And like I say, you open it up and it goes, you know, and then all of a sudden, you know, the person you know, usually drops it, you know, uh, if it's my wife, she screams out loud and slaps me. So. Right, right, right. Yeah. Hey, well, there's that romantic side again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I like, I mean, but, you know, I do get it, the whole noise thing. I mean, we've all had, I mean, have you ever been with a noisy, had a noisy neighbor? Yeah. Just all hours of the night, can't. I've I've had coworkers just, that never shut up and it stresses me out. Yeah. Yeah. Same yeah. thing. It's, it's you know that low can, level noise. You yeah. know what they should do? They should get little tiny noise canceling earbuds. For, for all the birds. For the birds. Yeah. And just to test and see if that's what the problem yeah, is. Yeah, just little yeah. tiny, and the snakes too, the snakes too. I don't want to seem anti-snake. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> did they did they do the stress test on the snakes? Just little, just little headphones. Can you picture it now? Little little tiny headphones on their yeah. little their little. Heads. See, I can see the I can see the rattlesnakes right now, all all frazzled, all their scales sticking out everywhere because yeah. all that noise and the stress factor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, snakes especially because they use vibration to detect like whether something's near or not, like for yeah. danger. So to them, it probably really messes with their mind because it's just true. every <laughs> second <laughs> like, every what was that noise? Always there. <laughs> Something's in the house. I, I felt something. Anymore. <laughs> there's like, you're <laughs> slithering around. Like, 
they, yeah, they, they never living, stop rattling. It's that like thing. their entire existence is like a jump scare horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> their entire existence. <laughs> See, nobody thinks about the rattlesnake. Nobody thinks it's all about, about nope. it's all about the pretty little bluebirds. Oh, nobody bears, cares about the rattlesnake. Feathers. Oh, they're looking a little frazzled. <laughs> yeah, oh, because they're, they're not poisonous. Oh. They won't bite me. <laughs> so what if you lose a digit or two due to necrosis from the right. venom? Yeah, it's no big deal. Exactly, exactly. Look, those people were asking for it. Yeah. Let's be honest. They, they went into Rattlesnake Canyon. Exactly. They knew it's what they were doing. clearly labeled <laughs> Rattlesnake not Canyon. Not like they were surprised by them. God, I knew a guy when I lived in Texas who was going to be the world's greatest rattlesnake hunter. Oh, that sounds like a brilliant person right there. Dude just got right bit off the bat. twice badly in like a three-month period of time. And, you know, was still talking about going... You know, back out after more. Yep, the side of uh, his face, face is paralyzed. I really like this. Oh, he had to have skin grafts on his hand and stuff oh, because man. you get tagged by a big rattler, it will mess oh, yeah. you up. Absolutely. Does he, Absolutely. Does he live in Tampa and does he like breaking into places? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Has he ever stolen from a funeral home? Uh, that may be him now. It's a, if yeah. not, they've got to be related. I'm sure they're cousins yeah. at the minimum. Well, because, yeah, I'm sure at some point the venom's going to reach your brain. It's going to do some damage up there, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's Just that's <laughs> that's what it was. That's that's uh, his his name was uh, Aaron Mininger, and he, yeah, that's that's what that's why he was bored and messed up. Well, the rattlesnake venom done people, got to the brain. You know, some people are like that. They just want to throw themselves in danger. I mean, I told my boyfriend Rattlesnake Canyon, and he's like, "I'm yeah. okay with that." That's that's a that's a honeymoon destination. Yeah, he's yeah. like, "That sounds fine. <laughs> that's acceptable." I'm uh, like, "Well, I told you. Yep. I warned you. Yep, warned you." He's he's a brave man. He is very brave. <laughs> Words of affirmation. He is very brave and hot. And did I mention I have a boyfriend? I've, I've yeah, I've heard. I think I think <laughs> you've said a time or two. All right. Uh, do you guys have websites? Do you have anything coming up that you wanna that you wanna promote? Anything you wanna throw out there before I take a I, break? I have a show on the second of March at Cafe Kerouac. Uh, an evening with the Berkeys. Uh, sorry, it's in uh, it's in Columbus, in Columbus. An evening with the Berkeys. I think I said it right. I don't know, uh, because I don't use people's last names. That so that's coming up. Uh, it's going to be a great lineup. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, let's see what else. Uh, I have my video business. So if anyone is listening who's a stand up comic and wants their stuff videotaped, you can go to my website at a plus z media dot com. Uh, and I'm also starting a podcast interviewing women who are working in comedy. So hit me up if you're a woman working in comedy and are interested in being on that show. Cool. Uh, mostly doing some writing stuff right now, working on a book of children's poems, uh, doing a fair amount of humor writing, uh, have some stuff up at www.archieweisman, A-R-C-H-Y-W-I-S-E-M-A-N, uh, dot weebly.com, uh, that's pretty much the biggest thing right now. So, All right. Well, thanks for coming in, you guys. We're going to go Thank ahead and take friends. a break, and uh, I'm going to kick you out. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> uh, we'll be back here shortly on The Life. You've seen him on IFC. You've heard him on the Bob and Tom Show. Now he's coming to Dayton. Comedian Mark Shalafu is going to be headlining at Wiley's Comedy Joint on February 23rd and 24th. Special guests include Josh O'Neill, Molly Hartzell, and Joe Young. The show starts at 7.30 p.m. and tickets are only $10. For more information, please go to www.wileyscomedy.com. There's a reason they call them Lazy Sundays. There's nothing better than sitting around and enjoying the comforts of a good book. But what book should that be? Well, every Sunday, Eventide brings you The Bookseller, hosted by Jessica Gillen. Each week, Jessica breaks down a different book and tells you everything you need to know before cracking it open and getting lost in a whole new world. Tune in every Sunday for The Bookseller with Jessica Gillen, brought to you by Eventide Entertainment. The weekend is over. Monday is here. But that doesn't have to be the end of your fun. Every week, Ellison Smith brings you a new episode of Saltwater Gaming, breaking down video games of all different genres, consoles, platforms, and eras. Get it all every Monday on Saltwater Gaming, 
brought to you by Eventide Entertainment. All right, we are back on the live radio show. I'm your host, Don Smith. Uh, we, we have kicked Adrian Miller and Archie Wiseman out of the studio. <laughs> uh, fantastic guests. So, always fun to be in here. Uh, thanks again for coming. And we they have been replaced by Aaron Lopez, correct? Yeah, yeah yes, but absolutely. I, I wanted to make sure. Yeah. You know, you have that hyphenated. I do. I just, yeah. I've always wondered. Why Lopez that. makes it easier on everybody. Yeah. Just go yeah. that route. <laughs> <laughs> but because I can't pronounce the other part. Yeah, most people can't. It's yeah. uh, it's Belgian, and people throw, like, it's a C-H, and it throws everybody off. So. Yeah, yeah, that's... Yeah. Yeah, you know, Americans are stupid. It's all right. It's all right. That's why we go Lopez. We go the yeah. opposite route. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, welcome to the show. It's your first Thanks, time man. on. It is. Uh, actually, first time I've met you. Now, I know yeah. uh, I, I've met your wife a number of times. Yep. Uh, fantastic, uh, Fantastically talented a- actress. Yeah, through uh, Unwritten. Yeah, through yeah, Unwritten, Unwritten Podcast. And you are uh, you have a couple of podcasts going on on Even Tide Entertainment, who yep. also broadcasts my show. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, well, uh, tell us about uh, tell us about those. All right. So uh, the first one that I've got uh, that one's been going since about October of last year, and that's the Drive In. It's a movie review podcast. So every Thursday, uh, a new episode drops, and what I like to do is bring on a guest host, somebody new every week. Um, I've had a few double up, but we just sit and talk about a movie that we saw that past week. Hmm. Um, the nice thing is, is usually people have had a week to see it. We try to do now, a new you release. See, you see the same one and then. Yeah. So it'll okay. be, uh, for instance, this past week, a friend of mine and, uh, and I went and saw Black Panther. And so we went and saw that. And then a couple of days later we digested it a little bit and then talked about it, recorded yeah. and that'll come out tomorrow. So, um, it's just, it's just a, a rundown of the, the movie with our likes and dislikes. And sometimes we get a little off topic and. But it's that fun. Happens. It's a good time. It happens on podcasts and radio. Absolutely. Shows. <laughs> you know, that, that's that's usually what I find to be the most interesting conversation is, you know, seeing how people will come in and, and yeah, we're here to talk about this and that, but seeing where it leads. And it's always fun. So, right. Yeah. And then the other one uh, actually is coming. First episode's coming next week. It's called Top Rope Wrestling Podcast. So any pro wrestling fans, uh, it's new local podcast there for you to listen to. Um, and actually my guest host from a couple weeks ago, Ben Norsworthy, is a former teacher friend of mine, and he's going to co-host that with me. Um, and that'll come out maybe once or twice a month. We're going to start small and just do the pay-per-views and talk about wrestling. And now that that's just pro wrestling, or do you get into MMA? We're gonna all we're, that, we're not sure yet. Right now, we're we're going to start small and go with just pro wrestling. Um, but it's kind of cool being in Cause, Ohio. Cause if, if you've never met Kyle Steele, okay, I haven't. He would he would be a fantastic guest actually for either one of your uh, podcasts. Excellent. Because he does, he does a couple. He does an MMA uh, podcast. Okay. Plus, he does the Nicolas Cage movie movie review I've heard hour of that. podcast. I've heard which of is that. Fantastic. Yeah. So he he would be a great guest for either. I'll one have of those to check shows, him out so. on that. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. we're we're not sure exactly where we want it to go yet. Um, and we're just gonna start small and see where it goes and where it leads to. But, um, yeah, I'm 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 excited to see what we're gonna do. Essentially, just talking about uh, wrestling in the world. And and the cool thing is, is I was I was thinking that. Um, you know, we could try to do some of those local shows. There's a lot of these like high school gym shows yeah. that make their way through Ohio. So it might even be fun to to try and yeah. I, I, I think I, I think I'm on a couple of pages with some because yeah, you know, being being in acting and film and mm-hmm. comedy, comedy. There are a lot of comedy wrestling fans. Yeah, out there. absolutely. So yeah. so yeah, I'll, I'll uh, have to reach out to uh, to Kyle. I, I've yeah. never been huge on. Well, and it's it, it's not for everybody. It's, it isn't. It's entertaining. Now, I I did used to watch uh, the Glow Wrestling. Back okay. At, back Have you in seen the, the Netflix series? On I that? did. I saw I Netflix, it, and it was pretty good. Yeah, it, was it was pretty, pretty cool. Good. But uh, yeah. I I remember the because uh, my dad used to record them because he loved it. he okay. loved the Glow Girls. Yeah, and he it's because he's fun. a pervert. And it, and it was really it was really entertaining. It was hilarious yeah. most of the time and it's you know everybody always jokes about it saying that it's a male soap opera but it is yeah. you know we oh, know yeah. it's a show and you know the the cool thing is is the professional side of it they stop trying to pretend that it's real and they open up that <laughs> right. and they say hey we're putting on a show we want you to be entertained and uh you know there's those people out there that grew up with it and it's changing and some like it some never liked it so yeah yeah, yeah that, now i i've been to a couple of the big arena events yeah. And that, that to me is a different, I can get into it then. Yeah. I, I can't watch it on TV, but when you're in the arena and it's, it, there's a lot of energy there. Yeah. And it's, yeah. I, I've been to a couple actually over here at the Nutter Center, uh, when they bring like SmackDown and gone oh, with yeah. a couple friends and it's a good time, you know, and, and there's people who can't stand it, but you take them to the, the live event. And like you said, there's a bit of an energy there. Oh yeah. There, there's you go to a any professional yeah. sport. It's, it's better live. 
Yeah, Always been that's, alive. That's true, because I, I don't think I'd ever be able to watch a uh, baseball game on TV. I, I love but, baseball, but I know exactly what but you mean. I, I don't mind. It's been a long time since I've gone to a, yeah. a stadium to watch a game, but I wouldn't mind doing it. Yeah, that's but fun. But I can't sit there and watch yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun going, and it's just you know getting a beer and a hot dog and just being there, and there's something to be said about just being at the event. Yeah, that is for sure. Now, you are also uh, going to be directing a... Uh, a stage production at uh, Playhouse South. Correct. Yeah, I'm a busy guy. Um, yeah. In a couple of weeks, we have auditions for Rock of Ages. Uh, and it's a, one of the first times that it's been done in a community theater in the area. It came through really? a few years ago um, through the Schuster and the Victoria Theater Association. They brought the tour around. Um, but it's one of the first times it's been done around here. And uh, it, it's going to be a really cool show. I'm excited. Um, it's nothing like the the movie. Everyone always talks about the Tom Cruise uh, movie that came out a few years ago. I've seen it. <laughs> it's it's and it's not good. They they well, you know, they've got their yeah, moments, but it's Tom Cruise. Yeah. Well, and it's, he plays you know, he plays a Brett Michaels wannabe kind of a character, and it's funny, but it's still it's just not it's not as good as the musical. So, yeah. so but yeah, we uh, have auditions March fifth, sixth, and seventh uh, for that, and then uh, we'll have our production go up in May. So a couple months of that, and cool. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I a com- couple of grueling months of rehearsal. Oh man, yeah, and it's. That's the kind of thing you get into. You, know, you had mentioned before we went on the the concept of acting in a show is a lot of work, but directing yeah. it's a lot of work. And you know, you just you put the right people around you, you cast the show the right way, and then you pray for the best. Yeah, I, I, I once heard that directing is kind of like herding cats. It is. Yeah, it's that, like everybody wants to go different directions. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. You, you come in with a good mindset, and um, it, it it for the most part the show works itself. There's a lot of work that goes in behind the scenes. But oh yeah. You put a lot of of trust in your cast your crew and your production team and um and it goes it usually goes pretty well and lo- local theater has always amazed me because just just because of the uh the family feel to it oh yeah because i uh well i started out on stage at uh dayton theater guild back oh, in, i think it was 2001 when i right. first first time i ever did a stage play and uh i went in i didn't know anybody and of course theater everybody knows everybody and i went in i knew nobody I, yeah you know they asked me and said well what what's what's your acting experience i said <laughs> none i've never done this so, well okay well even in high school i was like no i've never done this first time i was yeah. 25 years old i walked in i saw it in the <laughs> paper they had auditions and i was like that sounds like fun yeah and uh got cast and it was, it was a lot of fun i did several since then with the uh, dayton theater guild uh, brookville community theater okay. troy civic theater i did a, bu- a handful up there and i wish i had time to do more because i love it i it's love fun. doing I, I love performing on stage yeah. uh it's to me it's a lot easier than stand-up comedy yeah, but yeah. <laughs> to some people it is it's, to some it's, people it's very similar in some ways is, too you know, yeah yeah but yep. uh, it's just I, I miss it, and I just don't have the time. It's such, it's such a uh, such a commitment Major because commitment. you're you're months and months. You're there several nights a week. Just just as an actor, of course, as a director, you're there every night. Yeah, and the weekends. Yeah, and, yeah we yeah, get and the in weekends because it's community theater. You're half the time you're building the uh, building the set for it. Yeah. So yeah, it's a uh, yeah. It's it's you know, and Dayton's one of those areas that when me and my wife moved here a few years ago, we didn't realize how lucky we were to move here because there's so many theater opportunities. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. there there's you know, uh, professional, semi professional, community, and uh, it's just it's wonderful. Um, we got into involved with Playhouse South, but uh, there's you know, I, my first show was at Beaver Creek, and um, I was I was very similar. I hadn't done a show in almost ten years. Last yeah. one I did was in high school, and I walk in and just terrified and it was funny that uh you know I, somebody said something along the lines of are you scared and we're like oh, okay yeah we're all terrified yeah. <laughs> and you know just kind of it cut the tension and uh it's just a lot of fun you walk in i didn't know anybody and yeah. some of those people are some of my best friends now and it's a great yeah. great community great family as I, I walked in it was it was a production i auditioned for with it was directed by saul kaplan i don't know oh yeah you know, yeah great guy uh, legend of dayton community oh yeah, yeah absolutely is and I, I walked in there and of course i didn't know anybody and definitely didn't know the director and everybody mm-hmm. walked in not only knew everybody but knew him on a first name <laughs> basis and i was like yeah i ain't got a chance <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i know the feeling absolutely but i i've been in a handful of shows directed by saul and he's he's always fun to work with yeah, i haven't worked brilliant. with him but i've heard so many great yeah. things so oh yeah yeah at some point i'll, I'll uh, reach out over there and get away from the one theater but it's yeah it's it's always fun to 
to walk in as I was leaving. I actually knew Adrian through right. um, Unwritten and through um, she was in a show my wife directed in the fall. And you know, you just know everybody. You know, you may not know yeah. everybody personally, but there's a name goes out, and if you're in the community theater scene, you're you're familiar with that name. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think I've done a stage play in probably eight years. Got to get back into it. Uh, Find some time. Well, that, that's uh, I work second shift right yeah, now, so I'm I'm trying tough. to find something on day shift, and when I do, I'm gonna seriously consider it. Absolutely. Well, I, I also am part owner of Wiley's Comedy Club, so I have a lot of You're busy man some too duties I have there. Plus, yeah. you know, this and comedy when I can, and yeah. uh, getting getting ready. Uh, actually, have a cast meeting for Black Mama Rising, a new movie being made by William Lee. Okay, and that's going. We're going to have the cast meeting this Saturday for the first time. So. So it's ramping up for you it's, too. It's 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 ramping up for yep. me too. That'll be the it'll be the fourth movie I've done oh, with William. Awesome. So that's awesome. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully this one gets as as successful as the other ones because uh, the ones out now, uh, six feet below hell has been out on Redbox for nine months. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's great. It's, no, that's that's awesome. I haven't gotten into the film scene, but you know it's. it's it's as, around here anymore. It's about as vast as the uh, theater scene. Yeah, I, mean, I know so many people yeah. that have got you know some experience with it and some people like you are a little bit more than just some experience yeah and it's it, it's a lot of fun i i still prefer live theater yeah to comedy or film but yeah not having the time for live theater yeah it's 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 more of a commitment and yes it's all down into like a couple months but it stretches itself out at times so, oh yeah. yeah yeah now uh dayton south how how long a run do they do so what we'll do down there is um we'll open on uh may what is it? 11th. And that's the Friday, our opening night. We'll do uh, three shows that weekend with the Sunday matinee, and then we'll do it the next weekend. So we'll do, end up doing six shows. Okay, so um, just two weekends. Yeah, two weekends. The the Guild used to do three, and I always it, thought that third weekend just felt kind of run down. Yeah, it's you know tough how, on the you know, actors. The peak. Yeah, now absolutely. The, the show, a show is going to peak at yeah. one point. And, yeah, and that's something, too, that you know we, we've always talked about, the, the idea of maybe trying to do a third weekend or maybe trying to do a fourth performance on one of the weekends or both. And it's a lot of work. Um, you know, you, you go into a single show and you, it's depending on the role, depending on the, the show, you put a lot of emotions and energy into oh, it. Yeah. And so to do that, let alone six times, you know, maybe eight or nine times or however it may be, yeah. it might be, yeah, it starts to starts to take a toll on you. You just feel drained and yeah. um, you don't want the, the shows toward the end to lack something that. And, that and a lot of times with the third weekend, a lot of times I felt that they did. Yeah, and and the cool thing with with having the third weekend is by then the word of mouth may have gone around, um, but unfortunately you don't want the actors to to feel burnt out at the right. same time. Right. So. Now, now there there was one show I did there where we did three weekends and we actually added shows. Really? We we <laughs> it, it was called Sorted Lives. It was a very popular, very yeah. uh, very raunchy. And <laughs> that always I had, brings I in had crowd. so much. At, at one point, <laughs> I'm on stage and nothing but my underwear, and it was was not pretty. <laughs> see, see, last year I always did the same thing. I was in Heather's the Musical, and I played uh, Kurt. And right before you know we get shot on stage, we're down in just our underwear, me and a buddy of mine. And yeah, it's it's kind of an experience to to drop down to your skivvies on on stage. Yeah, I've I've <laughs> I've, I've, I've had three shows. I had to do that. <laughs> You're getting that's, typecast. Yeah, that's what I thought. I'm getting type. That's why I took a break from it. I was yeah. getting typecast in it. Cause, and and the funny thing is, the last one of the last shows I did wasn't the last one, but it was like the second to the last one I did. There was uh, there was a young lady; it was her first time on mm-hmm. stage, and uh, I I thought it was funny because I told her I said, you know, I have underwear that's been on stage more than. <laughs> <laughs> but she, that's great. That that was an interesting experience because that was uh, the first scene, opening scene of that show, is this. Same young lady and I on the couch mm-hmm. uh, making out. Yeah. And here we are backstage. It's her first time going on stage, and she's That's back. How you she's open like, up the oh show. My God. Oh, my God. I'm going to throw up. I'm going <laughs> to backstage. Not because of me. Yeah, just know, nerves. But yeah. just just nerves. And I'm the whole time I'm thinking, oh, great. You're going to throw up on me. <laughs> <laughs> what a way it, to start a, oh, an yeah. acting career, oh, though. Yeah. That was, <laughs> Jeez. She did a great job, though. Well, I, I think she went on, continued to do it. That's great. So I yeah. didn't, I didn't ruin it for her. That's that, that's good. <laughs> that wasn't a one and done situation. Yeah, yeah. But no, I, 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 I miss theater so much. Yeah, and that's it's kind of one of those things that you when I finally got back into it, I was I was in it was a Sweeney Todd at BCT, and from then I think 
between then and now I've, I've been in probably three or four or five shows, but I've directed just as many and done yeah. crew and tech. And, you know, it's, it's, there's a, there's a place for everybody in theater. Oh, yeah. You know, absolutely. you don't have to be the acting type. You know, we, we absolutely need a large assortment of people. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, there's all kinds of behind the scenes stuff that you got to, yeah. that has to be taken care of. I know uh, several of Dayton, several of the guild shows, I, uh, I was actually their gun wrangler. Yeah, yeah cause there's it, so cause, many well, random. It, it, I, well, yeah, I wasn't on stage, but theater, there was, uh, well, I was for uh, Sorted Lives because mm-hmm. I actually, I made some of my own blanks for that. Okay. Which was so much fun. I'm sure that'd be cool. Oh, yeah, because it, it was a double barrel shotgun. Okay. And I used real firearms just with, with no blank. nobody touched them but me till yeah. they went on stage and it was very, I was very controlling. Well, because, that, I mean, that well, makes you sense. know, yeah. Yeah, what can happen. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've, I've never had a misfire. <laughs> that's good <laughs> because you you know how theater is those, those blank pistols mm-hmm. those things don't work half the time because yeah. nobody really takes care of them you know using, prop, using, they get using my own they are well taken care of yeah so, yeah well, that's awesome yeah props props just get thrown all over they the do place, so. you know, there's the don't, there's the rule don't touch a prop that's not yours yeah other than problem is half of them look cool and you want to yeah. mess with them and you're like oh what's this but yeah yeah absolutely but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have to, I'll have to get back if I if I get a day shift job again, I'm gonna have to get out yeah. and do. There's and there's so that. many opportunities. You got to get out there and and even if you know put on your audition, you don't want to lead. You just want to kind of get your toes wet again. Right. Just be in the show and. Right. I've I've only had to lead a couple times. It yeah. doesn't happen. I don't often. like the lead. Yeah. I like to be the the guy on the side that makes everybody laugh. Or I like the yeah. villain. I don't like the lead. There's too much work for the lead. Yeah. One one of the last ones I did, I actually I blanked. On uh, it was it wasn't during a show. It was the final rehearsal. Okay, and that scared the life out of me because I, I went on eyes, I yeah. went on stage and it was my first line and I had no recollection of what it was. I just <laughs> went out because and part of the problem was is when I first went on, somebody asked me a direct question and my response was nowhere near a good response to that. the The actual response in the script was yeah. just so off. <laughs> that I forgot what I was supposed to say. And it just, uh, yep. Deer in the headlights. Yeah. <laughs> and from that moment on, every time, every time I got to the theater, I would read through the entire script before I went on. Yeah. <laughs> that became my habit. No, every time we, we get into habits as actors of like yeah. looking at it, looking at it, we know it, but it, we just get down there. We get yeah. right before and we're looking and looking. Cause it's just nerves. Oh yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's the nerves and it's, it's that fear of blanking, which you I get that I've, first line I've out. Usually it it's happen. better. But, oh yeah. 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 It's that first line. I've seen it. Well, I've, I've had it happen to me on stage doing comedy where really? I forgot. I, I had one show I was supposed to do 15 minutes. I think I ended up doing seven because <laughs> I could remember my setups. I couldn't remember a punchline. And I, I finally, after, after struggling and struggling and struggling, I just yelled at the host like, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Cut me. Yep. Get me out of here. Oh, that's, but, that's funny. Yeah. That's, that's always, that's always a. It's a legitimate fear too, because I don't think there's a worse feeling. Yeah, there's there is a such thing as stage fright. Yeah, yeah that's real. Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah. So we got to get you on uh, the drive-in. Absolutely. Find a, find a time yeah. to get you on there. Yeah. Uh, well, we we both have kind of hectic schedules. I know. I think, so. You know, the cool thing is, is actually, <laughs> so tomorrow, um, not tomorrow, this weekend, I'm gonna try a, a new technique of getting it so I can have remote recording, so the person doesn't have to be in the same place as me to record. Oh, cool. Um, and really, it would just be one of those things where you go see a movie, we find a time to record at the same time. and So we'll see if uh, maybe that works. But, yeah, that'd be a good but Yeah, I know uh, with, uh, with like Eventide, yeah, we Skype it in and yeah. try to see if we can maybe throw something together with that. So. Yeah, ho- hopefully Eventide really takes off. Yeah, they it got, seems, they seems like, like they, they it's got a lot growing. Of good shows on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah have, but then that's the good thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about switching the uh, – Instead of doing my feed separately, because I do my own feed for yeah. this show, for my podcast, and plus I have that he puts the whole thing out on yeah. Fridays, I'm yeah. thinking about just having him doing it, and I'm going <laughs> to just try to get anybody that that does listen to my feed now to just switch over. Start listening there. Because yeah. that'll save me money. Yeah. yeah. And hey, that's what it's about. <laughs> that's what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> and get, get more listeners to even. Yeah, play. Absolutely. All right. Well, I think I'm going to take a little break, uh, play some music. We got some Potter's Field queued up. Have you have you heard Potter's Field? I haven't. Uh, this this friend of mine I went to high school with him. He uh, has cu- has a couple albums now out now. He's with another band called uh, I cannot remember what they're called right now. 
All right. <laughs> but Potter's Field Potter's was a solo Field. project. He started out in a band called Destricor. Okay. So uh, here's here's a little Potter's Field, and I'll try to remember what the name of his new band is. All right, excellent. So. <laughs>
spam and sausage. That's got spam in it. Not as much as spam, egg, sausage and spam. <laughs> Look, could I have egg, bacon, spam and sausage without the spam? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I don't like spam. Spam, 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 spam. <laughs> All right, had to have a little spam yeah, in there absolutely. today. So we're back on the live radio show. I'm your host, Don Smith, sitting in the studio with Aaron Lopez, yeah. uh, director extraordinaire yeah, and podcaster. A little bit of everything. And a little bit of everything. And uh, you act a lot, too. Have, have you ever done film? Have you ever, I've never done just film. Never at all? <laughs> never done film. And I don't know why, if it's just opportunity or I don't have the look for it. I don't know if I've never it, jumped into it. It's but, a different kind of acting. Yeah. Altogether. Well, I, I don't know. I, I've I have been very interested in acting since I think my very first acting experience was the was one of those uh, Catholic school Christmas pageants, and I got dressed up as a cow and I got to say moo, and I was caught from yeah, there. Yeah, from then on. Yeah, from then like, on, you, I knew. You mooed better than any other. <laughs> yeah, and that's it's just funny because they randomly picked kids. They're like, hey, you, 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 and you, and then I dressed up in a cow outfit, and yeah, it was yeah. from then on. Uh, but yeah, I, I I've had a lot of fun acting i think more so recently i've gotten more into the directing side of it yeah. um just because I, I enjoy having uh overarching creative ideas yeah, yeah, get, creative expressed. control of, yeah yeah um but you know I, i'll dip here and there into the acting pool again depending on the show and um, obviously my schedule um but right. beyond that it's it's a lot of directing a lot of behind the scenes as well. Yeah, that, now, are, are you a, a an all controlling director, or do you let do you let your actors have some freedom first, and then tell them how you want it? Or uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say I'm not very controlling. Um, I'm I also direct at the the high school that I, I teach at, and I've done a lot of uh, high school directing as well. And I kind of take that as I, I treat my high schoolers like I treat my my adult actors as they're all adults, you right. know, and they're they're there for a reason. They're talented. They can come up with some some ideas, but um, when it comes down to it is I'm there to help guide them to some decisions. Right. Um, and sometimes there's some things that they'll try that I'll just flat out say, Hey, I wasn't feeling it. I don't like that. And I'll, but I'll be upfront with them. I'm just going to cut them off and say, Hey, no, that's horrible. Don't do that. And then we move on. Right. Um, you know, they're, they're there because they enjoy it. No one's getting paid to do it. Um, so yeah, you know, it, I'm not there yeah, to, to make life to, difficult. Yeah. There's one, one of the, one of the first ones I did, I had a stage manager that was rather, uh, rather controlling and i had the conversation with her once <laughs> i said look I, i'm doing this for fun yeah if it stops being fun mm-hmm. uh, i'm done yeah I, I think we've all had that experience where we're we're volunteers i mean yeah. we're, we're doing it for a hobby for fun but um we're not there to get yelled at um, right of course if we're doing something asinine we probably not well, yeah, need to get yeah. put in check but yeah if we're not then yeah, it, yeah it needs I, to be I had I, I've had directors that were very controlling. They wanted everything their way, and I've had some that was that would let let you run free with it for mm-hmm. a while and see what they liked out of it. But yeah. uh, I, one of one of my favorites, I had one that was very controlling, and there was something I wanted to do that mm-hmm. they didn't see it that way. But basically, my way was better. <laughs> and, and that we we kind of got into it about it, and I said, "Okay," I said, "I'll do it your way." Yeah, in rehearsals. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, ex- that's exactly what i did and the bad thing is that for the opening night i did it my way and and you got no she she, no, came, she came up to me and said okay it worked <laughs> <laughs> you got the laugh that you needed so exactly so it doesn't always work no way. it doesn't yeah. yeah i think we all have those those onstage horror stories that we've experienced and oh yeah yeah, yeah. Do do we want to hit some news stories? Do we want to see what's going on in the sure. world? Because it's 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 getting about uh, about twenty till. I usually yeah, let's try check it to out. bring bring some news stories on board. Fantastic. Uh, let's see. I mean, let me find something good here. Uh, huh. Okay. I'm. It's been a while since I looked at some of these. <laughs> uh, Continental is a rather infamous dive bar in New York City's East Village. There's a large, hard to ignore sign outside promising in the most recent iteration. Uh, uh, six shots of anything for $12. Uh, last week, musician Eden Brower uh, noticed a different sign taped to the window of the bar announcing the, that the word literally had been banned from the establishment. Uh, Brower tweeted a photo of the sign which read in all caps, sorry, but if you say the word literally inside Continental, you have five minutes to finish your drink and then you must leave. If you actually start a sentence with I literally, you must leave immediately. 
This is the most overused and annoying word in the English language, and we will not tolerate it. <laughs> uh, seems like a rather extreme solution to that problem, but okay. Uh, the bar updated the sign days later, throwing shade at one of America's most famous families, stating, stop Kardashianism now, <laughs> <laughs> which I have to agree with completely oh, on that's, both. That's great. Yeah, it's it's funny that you mentioned that. I have a friend who we tease him because he uses the word literally a little too often, <laughs> um, but even he knows he does. And so anytime he says it, we just give him the eye, and he's like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, all right. Fine. But it's just... He doesn't even care anymore at that point. It's right, though. Too often. Too often do people use it. Yeah, I got a phone call coming in. I hate it when that happens. When I'm on here and somebody calls my cell phone. They're, I'm busy. They're not listening. Yep. Yep. Call 775-5555. We'll put you on the air. We can talk. But, <laughs> <laughs> but if you're calling my cell phone, then you're not listening to the show. And that is a grievous error. That one is, that's one worthy of not answering the phone. Exactly. It's, it's just going to vibrate there. That's why I turn it to silent, too. Because, yeah. you know. <laughs> it's not the wife so it's okay they, i yeah, can ignore it'd be it. a different story yeah, if, it was, if, it was, if it was the wife I mean, it'd be a different story but she she never she never calls me anymore she, yeah she waits till i'm driving and then starts texting me yeah because i think she's trying to kill me but you're not supposed to text back right exactly. but if you don't text back well, yeah, where you yeah, if I do, yeah it's either i text back uh, uh, <laughs> or i don't text back and i get in trouble with her or i text back and i run off the road and... well the new thing now well, it's probably not new anymore but you can have uh siri read your messages to you and you can read, have like, hey, send back. But I don't. You, yeah. you never know what Siri is going to sound like when they. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I, I had a friend that did that all the time. I get, well, not a friend. <laughs> it's a guy I worked with. Not a friend. But he would. Uh, they're calling again. Are you kidding me? Go away. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> I had a the guy I worked with. He would do that, and he would because he would. He had a voice thing mm-hmm. where he could talk into his phone, and he wasn't driving. He was sitting on his butt at oh, work, man. and he would yell into his phone. Of course, it didn't didn't hear him right the yep. first time so he'd have to yell it four or five times and then he'd send it because it would copy it as a text and then he'd send the text to his wife and then he told me one day that his wife has an app on her phone where it'll read the text to her i was like so basically she doesn't want to talk to you on the phone it's, it's like, your voice that's the problem <laughs> she would rather hear uh, uh, some electronic voice yeah. like uh what's his name uh the, the scientist i can't oh, think of uh, his name yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, she'd rather hear that voice read his words. It's like she just doesn't like she just hearing. Doesn't like the sound. That's, of that's your what voice. it is. You've been married too long. She no longer likes the sound of your voice. That's great. So, <laughs> but to me, it's funny. He's, he's sitting there not doing anything. She yeah. was at home not doing anything. Just talk on the phone. Yeah, you don't have to scream no at your texting. You know? Yeah, <laughs> you're talking and listening, but that's defeating the purpose of texting. Right, you exactly. Know? Yeah, can't have that. We have texting now. We have we, we have new technology. We can talk into our phone, convert it to text, send the text, and then convert to text to sound when it gets there. Who needs, Who needs a telephone? Who needs to talk to somebody anymore? <laughs> yep, that's just, that's so 1990. <laughs> <laughs> Corded phones. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, where are we at here? Uh... Even going for a leisurely bike ride in Australia isn't without its share of animal-related dangers, as a group of cyclists discovered last weekend. A group of six riders was cycling through uh, the Boona region of, in southeast Queensland, pardon me, about an hour from Brisbane on Friday when a kangaroo suddenly emerged from the bushland lining, in the, lining the road and leaped into a female rider. <laughs> Uh, they said after we crested a hill about 30 kilometers into the end of the ride, we slowed to let others catch up. Uh, two of us saw the kangaroo on both saw kangaroos on both sides of the roads. The one on the left hopped away. The one on the right waited to join its mom, join its mob, a video captured a handle by a handlebar mounted camera. See, I haven't read this in a while, so I'm kind of, <laughs> kind of rusty here, uh, on a handlebar m- mounted camera. Of one of the riders showed the moment when the large kangaroo bound out of the bush and ru- to the right side of the road, uh, crossed over the other side of the road in the process, colliding with one of the cyclists. A cyclist named Rebecca was injured in the collision, but the kangaroo hopped away apparently unscathed. Those things are dangerous That's because it's a kangaroo. Yeah, yeah. you see the uh, the videos of people just getting walloped by those yeah. things. Yeah, pack That's- a punch. Well, yeah, they're they're large <laughs> large animals. It's like like hitting a deer. I'd yeah. hate to do that on a bicycle. Yeah. That's, about this, about the same thing. I was, I was reading a while back. There was uh, the issue. One of the issues they were having down there with the self self driving cars, the mm-hmm. cars that had, you can tell what's around yeah. you, is they can't detect them. 
Oh, because it's not because, part of the system. Because it's not, well, because they hop. So yeah. they only go what's off the ground. Oh, wow. And they, the kangaroos confuse yeah, the self-driving sure. cars. So it's like, eh, that's not going to work. Nope. <laughs> Got to make sure you are in a kangaroo-less environment. Exactly, exactly. No, yeah. no self-driving cars in Australia. This is getting on my nerves now. <laughs> should, I, should I answer? Let's, let's see who, if this is a salesperson, I'm coming after you. Security software on my computer. You didn't install anything. Shut up. This is why I hate cell phones. Yeah, I know. Everybody has access to your number. Exactly. Exactly. So I've been thinking about getting rid of my home phone because mm-hmm. nobody has my home. No, nobody uses my home phone number except my one brother and telemarketers. Mm-hmm. So telemarketers already have my cell phone number. Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah, you know, and it's, it, there's a new thing going around, and it's everywhere because um, every person I talk to has got it. I've got an old Illinois area code because i grew up over there and um so if i ever get a, a phone call from that area code i know it's nobody that i know they they get your your number and then right. they sell it and um they there's a scam going around but if you get a random phone call from somebody back home and it's not in your phone chances are just don't answer it oh yeah absolutely yeah. well that went off about unless three they, or four times unless they call three or four and, times yeah, while was, you're recording and it was a recording it's like okay <laughs> what are you stuck in a loop <laughs> yeah that's crazy All right. An inmate who escaped from a federal prison in southeast Texas was arrested Wednesday while allegedly trying to sneak back in with snacks, alcohol, tobacco, and cooked food. Uh, Jefferson County Sheriff's Office uh, said in a statement that that they had been tipped off that the inmates had been sneaking out of the prison complex and reentering with contraband. Uh, Joshua Randall Henson, uh, 25, was spotted by sheriff deputies and U.S. Marshals running out of the back of the federal prison in Beaumont on Wednesday evening. Uh, the statement said Hansen picked up a large duffel bag that a vehicle had dropped off at the private property adjacent to the prison. Uh, the deputy said they arrested Hansen as he was trying to reenter the prison. The duck- duffel bag contained three bottles of Martell brandy, a bottle of Crown Royal whiskey, multiple bags of bugler tobacco, salty snacks, fruit, and home-cooked foods like barbecued sausage and fried chicken. Uh, Hansen, Hansen is serving 27-month sentence for drug-related charges. He now faces additional charges of escape and marijuana possession. Oh, they didn't say that was in the bag, too. Yeah. See, they didn't list they didn't. that because that never made it to the Very evidence in the locker. Lead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, according to Deputy Marcus McClellan, Marcus McClellan, I'll say it right eventually, if it kills me, uh, inmates walking off the prison grounds only to return with contraband is not a new phenomenon. He told uh, Beaumont Enterprise that similar incidents have been occurring pretty much since day one. Wow. So it's no shock to them, apparently. That's That's pretty crazy. You know, yeah. it, and here's the th- here's the big thing is they, they they're going to leave, but they're not going to try to stay off the property. Right. You're going to risk being charged with escape huh? just so you can try to come back in. Now, the question was, is they said they were, he was hiding it in a bag, right? Yeah. OK. I'm, I, I'm, I was just curious. That's a lot to try to sneak in. Yeah. The, the old other way. Yeah. The other way. way. So yeah, that's, that's yeah. Yeah. That's, that, that that would be uh, that'd have to be several that's, little bags. That's to, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> Yeah, but, yeah but, besides, I mean, a lot of it was food items, and nobody yeah, would want it after it was snuck in the old. Not going back thing. on that one. Yeah, no, I, no, guess, I guess the uh, old-fashioned cake, you know, the, the cake yeah, with, doesn't with work the, anymore with the hacksaw in yeah. it or the file. You yeah, got to escape yeah. now to, to get your. Well, cake. that's that's because they, they can't hand them over. Yeah, you know, which uh, I mean, I, I I can understand. That's if funny I, though. There, there'd, there'd be some things. If I was stuck in prison, I would love to have some tobacco, yeah. liquor, and and fried chicken. And that fried be, chicken. Yeah. Oh man! Absolutely, because there there got to be some things you miss. And I'm fruit, sure. like they've got to be given fruit in, in prison. I would it hope probably so. isn't the freshest, so. or it well, may not yeah, be the, your your choice. But yeah, but I don't know. But I imagine they they wouldn't give them fried chicken because of the bones, you know. Yeah, you, you sh- file them Absolutely. down into a nice shank. Yeah, you have a have a have a chicken leg shank. Half of those yeah. things you just break, and they're already a shank. They're sharp. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So that's that's why. But the fruit, I don't know. They'll throw them at somebody. Yeah, spit seeds in their there eye or go. something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah well, or you or or throw them. There's some fruit that is pretty solid if it hits you in the head. Yeah, they they wouldn't be able to give them apples. or Yeah, anything, apples like something. Some they have to be something fairly soft. Bananas. Yeah, bananas. They'd right. have to. Uh, yeah, once they get mushy, they'll give them the the overripe ones. Yeah, the the ones yeah. that they sell for like two cents a pound. At, yeah, that way you go, you go to you go to hit somebody it just squishes in your hand and there you, you go. got nothing. No you, harm. You've been disarmed. 
<laughs> I actually, the, 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 there's there's a Monty Python sketch about that too. I actually played it earlier in okay. the show about defense against fresh fruit. <laughs> oh, nice! <laughs> and we've come full circle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's only <laughs> only one way to deal with a banana fiend. <laughs> First, you force him to drop the banana. Yeah, then yeah. you eat the banana. You have now rendered him helpless. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, gotta love Python. You are you a Python? I fan? am. Yeah, my yeah. dad uh, got me growing up on it. I think I was in like middle school where I first saw uh, my first one. I saw was Life of Brian. Uh, oh, Life that, of Brian that's one was one of the best ones. One of my favorites. Yeah, and grow, growing up Catholic, the Holy and Grail it was, was great. great. The Holy yeah. Grail was great, but to me, I, the Life of Brian is such a better movie. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely love. And then uh, Meaning of Life, Meaning of Life, and that Life one, of Brian are my two fun. favorites. Yeah, that one's fun. So no, there's just something about uh, the the whole connection and and basically the fact that they just took catholicism and just kind of turned it on its head and it's funny growing up you know going to a catholic school and then finally getting seeing people kind of say oh hey there's there's some funny ways to look at well yeah like in the meaning of life when they're doing the 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 prayers Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. (laughs) and they're singing the song about don't kill us and squish us yeah yeah. (laughs) (laughs) oh lord you are so big yeah (laughs) yeah just (laughs) super (laughs) just super (laughs) Oh, uh, yeah, I, I love, love, love some Monty Python. <laughs> uh, for the first time, the U- a U.S. state has legalized marijuana with the stroke of a pen, not a vote at the ballot box. Vermont Governor Phil Scott on Monday, this is a couple Mondays ago, signed into law House Bill 511, which legalizes the possession of marijuana up to an ounce and removes penalties for possession of up to two mature marijuana plants and up to four immature plants. Well, if you have four immature plants, eventually you'll have four mature ones. So why does that? That makes no <laughs> sense at all. You're just getting rid of them yeah. as you go. Maybe. Yeah, that's like lim- limiting you to four children, yeah. but only two adult children. So <laughs> two of those have got to go. That's, <laughs> that's a curious. Uh, uh, the legislation yeah. says nothing about creating a state market for recreational weed. However, the new law will go into effect in July. Uh Scott said, today, with mixed emotions, I have signed House Bill uh, 511. I personally believe that what adults do behind closed doors and on private property is their choice, so long as it does not negatively impact the health and safety of others, especially children. With Scott's signature, Vermont will join eight other legal weed states, as well as Washington, D.C., in a growing movement away from federal law, which still classifies marijuana as a Schedule One substance, alongside heroin and LSD, which never made sense to me. Yeah. Vermont legalized medical marijuana in 2004 and is currently among nearly 30 states, plus the territories of Guam and Puerto Rico and District of Columbia, with such programs in place. Well, good for Vermont. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. The only thing that worries... <laughs> Uh, that doesn't really worry me. I'm a I'm a firm believer in the Second Amendment. But uh, Vermont, you ever heard the term Vermont carry? Huh. See, Vermont, like here, we have to have a permit for yeah. concealed carry. Vermont is a free carry state. Really? You don't have to have a permit to carry concealed. Did or not open. know that. Yes. Oh man. Yes, Vermont is one of the uh, uh, Vermont and Alaska. I think are the only two states that you actually don't need any training or any permit. Well, Alaska to carry a makes sense firearm. with all the grizzlies. All the, right, you know, right, right. Vermont, but, you know. That's, I don't know. Yeah, I guess it's all the maple syrup. I don't, I, yeah, I don't know what's You don't <laughs> want people taking your syrup. <laughs> yeah, but is it so cl- it's just because it's close to the Canadian border, or a lot of the, rough stuff see, going on there. I'm surprised it took them that long with uh, Ben and Jerry's being there, you know, with, with, uh, yeah. with, uh, to, the, to, the, to legalize, to legalize weed? Weed. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's Ben and Jerry's is going to boon. Oh, yeah. Oh, in, yeah. in July. They need they they need a pot flavored ice cream now. I I'm surprised. I'm, I'm sure it's flavored, some... not pot flavored because that would kind of stink. Yeah, but they do need to. There needs to be an edible weed ice cream. Those those guys keep putting some crazy stuff. Be out. Like it would ben, never surprise me. Ben and Jerry Garcia. <laughs> well, they have cherry. They Garcia have cherry already, Garcia. They do. That's, uh, yeah, that's they do. Yeah, they, they'd have to they'd have to come up with something something else clever for yeah. weed ice cream. <laughs> you ever look on their uh, their graveyard of all the the old flavors that never made it uh-uh. oh there's some ones in there that i it, you look at and you're like oh that could be good and then you realize it's an entire pint of it and maybe yeah. the first couple bites would be all right and then beyond yeah that, that's that, true you get something with an aftertaste yeah. too, it really wouldn't be good at all so, yeah it's <laughs> you don't you don't want to to linger a little bit with uh with those flavors yeah that's true that's true that could be rough all right well uh i'll let you throw out your information out there again as far as your podcast cool. and everything of course you can find it on even tight entertainment yeah so uh, right now, as far as the uh, podcast goes, Drive-In comes out every Thursday. 
Uh, you can subscribe on Spreaker. Uh, you can find us all also on the iPod, the iPodcast app. Uh, just look for Eventide Entertainment or the Drive In, and you will find me. Those new episodes come out every Thursday. Uh, Top Rope Wrestling will also be coming out Thursday, but in the afternoon. So if you're into wrestling, come check that out starting next week. Um, and then if you're into theater and you want to come out for Rock of Ages, our auditions are March 5th and 6th. Uh, and you can check Facebook for Rock of Ages Playhouse South Auditions. You get some more information there. So, All yeah. right. Well, th- Aaron Lopez, thanks for coming on thanks the show. Thanks for having me on. We're going uh, to go ahead and close it out. All right. Sounds good. But de- definitely check out Eventide Entertainment. Absolutely. EventideENT.com. Uh, for air, both both of Aaron's shows, yeah, and, and uh, my and show. If you if you listen to this and say I want to listen to that again, so good, it's so <laughs> nice. I want to hear it twice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, which I mean, they are, but still. All right. <laughs> uh, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get us out of here. Thanks for coming on again. Yeah, thanks, Tom. and we will see you guys next week. This has been the Life Radio Show on WWSU 106.9 with your host, Don Smith. The Life is also available in podcast form on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, Spreaker, Blueberry, and YouTube, as well as on Eventide Entertainment's podcast network. Be sure to like the Life Radio Show on Facebook, and if you have any comments or suggestions, email thelife1069 at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Now get out there and enjoy some live comedy this week. You can check out Wileyscomedy.com for all your upcoming shows. The brutal presence overwhelms me. The brutal presence overwhelms me.